Can I? Excuse me. Are you live? Yeah. Are you ready to go? Ready to go. We love your YouTube family. Today, we greet you in the marvelous name of Jesus. We're going to review. Uh, we're going to go over the teaching by our dear friend, Miles Monroe. Uh, the subject is understanding your potential. Glory to God. Understanding your potential. Okay, we ready to read? Need you to read properly and loudly, hey sons. I'm excited about this thing. Yeah, the subject to the prophet. Amen. The subject, God will always make the time for it. Listen, in Jesus' name, let's go over who we're going to talk about today. Thus far, I know people are online since Monique. Monique, I know you out there. She's online. She's in New York. She's busy. Uh, we've looked at so far, by way of review, we look, our subject has, our first chapter, we look at everything in life has potential. Everything in life has potential. All right? Then we look at our second chapter was the source of all potential. <laughs> and we all know who the source of all potential is. Say God. God. Today, who are you? Y'all ready to read? Yes. Amen. Okay, the family online is going to be listening to you. I need you to be clear. Read it loud. Come on. Who, who are, are you? you? Come on. Who you are is related to where you came from. Many look, few see. A sculptor works in a very interesting <coughs> way. I'm an artist of sorts, so I have a bit of an understanding how artists work. One thing I have learned is that you never argue with an artist until he is finished. Don't discuss anything with a painter or a sculptor until his work is completed. An artist can be very rude if you disturb him before he has accomplished what he intends to do because he sees differently than those who are not artists. An artist can walk by the, by the stone in your front yard and see a figure in it. He may stop by your house and beg you for a stone you have work, walked past many times without noticing. The dogs may have been doing stuff on it. You may even have been planning to get rid of it because it's a nuisance. But the artist walks into your yard and sees something beautiful in that stone beyond what you can imagine. Two months later, when the artist invites you to his workshop, he says, do you see that? Do you know where that came from? England or France, you ask. No, says the artist, it came from your yard. Do you mean? Yes, $500, please. You was, you was sitting on $500. The dogs were doing stuff on $500, but you couldn't see the potential in the rock. Uh, mm -hmm. Come on, you are not, you need to realize there's potential in any and everything. <coughs> yes. Okay? Yes. You are, what's the next thing? You are not junk. You are not junk. <coughs> it don't matter what people said about you. <coughs> Excuse me. You are not junk. Read. There are many people who are being passed by because others don't see what is in them. But God has shown me what's in me, and I know it is in you, too. My job is to stop you and say, can you see what's in you? Do you know your potential? Do you know that you are not just someone born in a ghetto over the hill? There's a wealth of potential in you. A sculptor sees you differently. They say Michelangelo, though, used to walk around a block of marble for days, just walking around it, talking to himself. First he would see things in the rock. Then he would go and take them out. Insight like that of a sculptor is seen in the Bible. When the world dumps and rejects you, and you land on the garbage heap of the world, God walks along and picks you up. He looks deep within you and sees a person of great worth. Uh -huh. Don't ever let anybody throw you away. Say that with me. I'll not let anybody throw, throw me, me away. away. Don't feel, don't go through life with rejection and, and somebody have walked away from you and let them determine your value. Keep teaching. 
You are not dumb. When God looks at you, he sees things that everybody else ignores. Uh -huh. You are worth so much that Jesus went to Calvary to salvage and reclaim you. The Spirit of God connected to your spirit is the only true judge of your worth. Don't accept the opinions of others because they do not see what God sees. I would underline that in your book. Amen. They do not. Men do not see what God sees. Yes. Because God is the one creating you. Mm -hmm. Keep teaching. God looked and saw. Uh -huh. God looked at Adam and saw a world. He looked at Abraham and saw nations. In Jacob, a deceiver. He saw a messiah. In Moses, the murderer, God saw a deliverer. Can you imagine looking at a stammering young man and seeing the greatest leader in history? That's for, yes. them, that's for them stammerers. We've had some stammerers yes. in our family. Yes. The man said, you hear me? Stammerers. Moses was a stammerer, mm -hmm. but he was also a, what? a deliverer. Yes. Don't let something that you deal with in your body determine your value. Amen. Oh, keep teaching. Amen. God saw a king and a shepherd boy. Uh -huh. When the Israelites wanted a king, God sent Samuel to the house of Jess. When Jess heard why Samuel was there, he dressed up all his sons, the handsome one, the tall one, the curly-haired one, the strong one, the muscular one. All the sons of Jess twirled out before Samuel, from the greatest to the least. With his vest of anointing oil, with his vase, vest, vase of, anoint, of anointing oil, uh -huh. Samuel watched Jesse's show as he presented his sons. Uh -huh. This is my intelligent son who graduated from the University of I don't know what. <laughs> Come on. After the guy gave a speech, Samuel said no. The next <coughs> son came out dressed like Pat Polson, and God said no. A third son gave a nice speech about philosophy, and again, God said no. Uh -huh. Finally, after Jess had paraded all of his sons before him, Samuel said, I'm sorry, none of these is God's choice for king. Uh -huh. Do you have any other sons? Then Jess said, yes. Well, no. I just remember. I do have a little boy, my youngest son. A little boy. He's just a little runt uh -huh. who's out taking care of the sheep. Yeah. He's not dressed up like my other sons, uh -huh. nor have his hands been manicured and his body scented with perfumes from the east. Uh -huh. This guy's really smelly because he's been out with the sheep for quite some time. Uh -huh. Bring him, Samuel replied. Let me look at him. So Jess sent for his youngest son. When Samuel saw Jess's youngest son walk into the house, a little boy, he began to unscrew the lid on the vase. I think I have found the guy I'm looking for, Samuel said. Notice that God chose the son who was out working. He was busy. God chooses busy people. You ought to note that. Mm, that's good. If, if you're going to be used of God, mm -hmm. God not call a lazy person. He'll call somebody that's busy. Mm -hmm. Say, I'll stay busy. I'll stay, I'll stay busy. busy. Come on, keep teaching. Most of us are like Jess. We look, but we don't see. Were you the black sheep in your family? You know God likes sheep. Mm, that was a little yellow one. Okay. Has your family told you that you are a nobody? Has anybody told you in your family that you, you won't amount to much? Where are you the are you the so-called black sheep of your family? Keep breathing. Have you been put off and put out and told so many times that you will amount to nothing that you have begun to believe it? Do you feel like the black sheep? What's your what's your self-esteem level like? Uh-huh. Come on, teach me. You are probably the one God is waiting for in the house. Mm -hmm. God sees things deep within you that others can't see. They look at you and see a nobody. God looks at you and sees a worthwhile somebody. You may spend your whole life competing with others, uh -oh. trying to prove that you are somebody, uh -oh. and still feel like nobody. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Be sure from that. Be, be free. Uh -huh. Be free from that today. Uh -huh. 
You do not have to live with that any longer. Underline this next line. Say it loud, everybody. <laughs> you don't have to try to be somebody because you are somebody. Powerful point. You're going to need that. We're going to do Q&A as we read, okay? We're going to get to the end of this. Listen, you don't have to try to be somebody because you are, are somebody. Give me a scripture, scripture reference for that. The Bible says it's be... You're carnal if you're trying to compare yourself one to another. Church choirs fighting. Pastors ministry battling another ministry. Stop there. That's a sign of carnality. That's fleshly to compare a song or a group or anything. In spiritually, you don't compare one man of God to another man of God or one choir to another choir or one song. No. Mm -hmm. Somebody say, I, I, I must be spiritual. I must be Never spiritual. compare yourself to somebody else. Keep, keep teaching. You came out of God. Say it out loud, everybody. You came out, you came of, God. out of God. Come on. When God created the heavens and the earth, he first decided what he wanted to make something out of, and then he spoke to that source. Follow me, God. Follow me. You need to read this with us. Come on. When God wanted plants, he spoke to the dirt. Mm -hmm. When God wanted fish, he spoke to the waters. When God wanted animals, he spoke to the ground. Come on. Whatever God spoke to became the source from which the created thing I'd, came. I'd underline that if I was you. <coughs> Whatever God spoke to became the source from which the created thing came. Explain to me. Plants dust came from the dirt, uh -huh. fish from the water, uh -huh. and animals from the ground. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, plants returned to the dirt, uh -huh. fish returned to the sea, and animals returned to the ground when they died. Mm -hmm. All things have the same components and essence as their source. Mm -hmm. What God created is, in essence, like the substance from which it came. Mm -hmm. That means plants are 100% dirt mm -hmm. because they came from dirt. That's what we do. When we eat our salads, we're eating what? Dirt. Mm -hmm. Come on. Animals are 100% uh -huh. dirt uh -huh. because they came from the ground. Uh -huh. If we would take an animal apart, we would come up with genuine dirt. If we would put a plant under a microscope and decipher all the different components, we would find that everything in that plant is in dirt because the plant is dirt. God called it from the dirt. Uh-huh. Come on. Not only are all things composed of that from that uh, composed of that from which they came, they must also remain attached to that source in order to live. Mm -hmm. All things must be maintained and sustained by where by where they came from. Mm -hmm. The minute a plant decides it doesn't like the earth anymore, it dies. Uh -huh. The minute the fish decide they are tired of water, they die. The moment, the minute animals decide we don't want to eat any more dirt, they begin to die. Mm -hmm. Thus, whatever God created came from that to which he spoke. Uh -huh. All things were created by God's word to a source. The source of the creation also becomes, then, the essence of that creation. All things are composed of whatever they came from and hence contain the potential of that source. That means plants only have the potential of the soil. Animals only have the potential of dirt. Uh -oh. When God wanted fish, he spoke to the water. When he wanted animals, he spoke to the dirt. When God created human beings, he spoke to himself. Now, we're gonna, let's get deep here. You should underline this. How we do, how do we know that God, when he created human beings, he spoke to himself? Because the Bible says so. What does the scripture say? Genesis what? 1, Genesis 1, 26 27. What does it say? Then God said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness. So God created man in his own image. Mm -hmm. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Genesis 1, 26 and 27. So man is both what? Male and what? Female. female. But whether they're male or female, they're still considered what? Man. Say man. 
man. man. Okay, come on. God created you by speaking to himself. Mm -hmm. You came out of God and thus bear his image and likeness. We're going to begin to explain. Sister Nikki, yeah, help her now. We're going to begin to explain what it means to look like God. Read. Look at the inventor, not the invention. Speak up so they can hear you. Never use the creation to find out who you are because the purpose of something is only in the mind of the one who made it. That is one of the reasons why God has a tremendous problem with idol worship. How can you identify your ability by worshiping, worshiping a snake? How can you find out your worth by believing that you will come back as a rat or a roach? Uh, what, How, what they, what, excuse me, what do they call that? Reincarnation. Reincarnation. Don't kill a mosquito, don't kill the rat, you know what I'm saying? Or, or, or don't kill a cow. Because it could be Auntie Flo Flo. Oh, no, no. I'm having a steak because I'm free. Come on. How, how <laughs> dare you believe that your purpose for existence can be discovered in a relationship with a wooden statue? You would never know yourself by relating to the creation, only to the creator. The key to understanding life is in the source of life, not in the life itself. You should mark that, underline that last, that last mm -hmm. line. Amen. The key to understanding life is in the source of life, not in the life itself. Keep teaching. Many of the inventions man has produced would be misunderstood if only an invention were considered and not the intention of the inventor. In other words, the man who created the refrigerator had in his mind what it was supposed to be used for. He did not intend that it should be used for a trap in the backyard for a kid to be locked in and died from suffocation. Mm -hmm. Even though thousands of children have died in refrigerators, that was not the inventor's intention. Mm -hmm. The um, automobile is tearing out lampposts all over the world and destroying people's homes and lives. But Mr. Ford, who first developed the assembly line to mass produce the automobile, never thought about it that way. Uh -huh. He was thinking about transporting people people and helping the human race to become a mobile community. Uh -huh. He started us to thinking about trolleys and trains and buses. The many people who died through accidents and derailments were not part of his intentions. Uh -huh. They were not in his mind when he designed his famous T Ford automobile. Uh -huh. You have part of God. Mm. You will never discover who you were meant to be if you use another person to find yourself. Ooh. You will never know what you can do by using what I've done to measure your ability. Stop. Let me say this to you. If you marry, you got to get this concept. If you marry trying to find yourself in your spouse, you already wear. Right. Yep. You got to know thyself. Mm -hmm. yep. That person should enhance you. Yes. But you should have to, you should look to that person to be your source of joy, peace, or contentment, or fulfillment. And many times people are looking for their father and their, and their husband, or they're looking for their mama and their wife. That's a problem. You remember that book, Your Wife Ain't Your Mama? <laughs> Amen. You remember that book? I got that somewhere. Where a lot of times we're looking in our spouses to find something that we miss in our lives or in our relationships. No. It takes a whole person marrying another whole person yeah. to have a whole marriage. Right. right. Ain't no my better half. Ain't no better half. That's, that's carnal stuff. That's flesh. That's, that's the world's wisdom. It ain't my better half. She's the best that God wanted for me. I married the best. And she married the best. Amen. Because she said yes to what God wanted. Because we free will. We have free moral agents. We free moral agents. See, so I just want to sort of slip that in singles be sure you are whole and full and know who you are before you marry somebody else keep teaching you will never know why you exist if you use my existence to measure it all you will see is what i've done or who i am if you want to know who you are look at god somebody say that look at god look, look at, at god, god. Look come at on god. The key to understanding life is in the source of life, not in the life itself. You are who you are because God took you out of himself. If you want to know who you are, you must look at the creator. Or knowing, 
Second, God is omnipresent, which means God is present everywhere. Third, God is Not always full of potential. <laughs> always full of potential, uh-huh. Our potential is the dormant ability, reserved power, untapped strength, and unused success God designed into each of us. What I see when I look at you is not all you are. It is only what you have become so far. Your potential is much greater than what you are right now. What you will become is much more than you could ever <laughs> believe now. You are somebody because you came out of God and he leaked some of his stuff into you. That's why God don't have no problem what, with you being glorified because when you glorify, given honor and dignity and praise, He's being, you wouldn't be here unless mm -hmm. you are God's idea. You're not here religious people saying that we're not going to steal your glory. You need to get a revelation of something. When you look good, God looks good. Yeah, yeah. When you sound good, God sounds good. Because God is good and he's always successful. So when you succeed as his representative, what? He is looking good from heaven. If you a failure going somewhere to happen, he's not glorified in that mess. You got a rabbit pair of shoes or no shoes, can't afford to feed yourself, your children got, they ain't never had nothing nice done to their hair, can't afford a nice car. God ain't glorified in that. God said he put his what glory in a what, an earthen vessel mm -hmm. that the honor, that the glory might be of God, not of you. God put himself in you so you can Look good in the earth mm -hmm. <coughs> and be free and be successful. See, I, I, God want me successful. God wants me successful. I mean, because if we're not representing, we're not representing. So God ain't jealous of you. He himself is living in you so you can look good. You're not doing this thing alone. Come on. God pronounces what he sees. How you feel or what others say about you is not important. You should write, you should mark that. Mm-hmm. You are who God says you are. He sees you in more than you can possibly imagine. Your potential is limited only by God, not others. Mark that. <laughs> Let me say that again. Say it with me. Your potential is limited only by God, not others. Coward or warrior. Uh -oh. God came to a frightened young man <coughs> named Gideon. Gideon obviously thought God was talking to someone else. When the angel of the Lord called him a mighty warrior, Judges 6, 12. Mm -hmm. The angel didn't say, oh, coward, do you know you have strength? Nor did the angel say, oh, black man, do you know what you can be like a white man? The angel just came in and announced what he saw. Oh, mighty man of war power. That means, oh, great warrior. Mm -hmm. Think about it. Warrior, Gideon was hiding from the enemy, trying to separate some wheat from the chaff so he wouldn't starve. He was doing it underground so no one could see him. He was at the McDonald's driving hoping somebody drop a McNugget on the ground. That's <laughs> my face is like, what? He was scared to death. He, he, the Israel was surrounded by enemies, and he was just hoping to keep from starving to death. Go ahead. When the angel said, when the angel said you are a brave man, mm. Gideon started looking around to see who the angel was talking to. Who that? <laughs> Come on. God never tells us what others see. Uh -oh. He never calls us what others cause us. Uh -oh. Gideon thought he was a coward. God knew him to be a great warrior and pronounced what he saw. Mm. Mm. Flaky. Flaky. Say God says, God says what he sees. Mm -hmm. God says what he sees. Men are qualified to make statements about you because they don't see what God sees. Amen. Talk to me about Flaky. God also saw in Peter what also what others failed to see. Uh -huh. His given name was Simon, which means Simon, meek. Simon, Simon, Simon yeah. which means meek. Right. Literally, it means unstable, flaky, leaf. So Peter was flaky. <laughs> what? Was Read. Up. When Jesus met Simon, he was the flakiest, leafiest man you ever met. He was always going with the wind, changing his mind. You met anybody like that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That you don't know what they mean, because they say something that you never know what they'll do. Mm -hmm. He was a flake. Say a flake. A flake. Uh-huh. Come on. But God saw a stone in a leaf. 
Yeah. The first time Jesus met Peter, he changed Peter's name from Simon Leaf to Peter Stone. Wow. Although Simon was an unstable guy, Jesus said, I'm going to change your name. Mm -hmm. Your name is Peter. Uh -huh. Peter acted like a leaf throughout Jesus' earthly ministry. Uh -huh. Still, Jesus called him rock every morning. <laughs> wow. Jesus saw in Peter something his mother had not seen. Ooh. He kept chipping until finally at Pentecost, Peter's true nature was revealed. On the day of Pentecost, in the book of Acts, Peter, the untrained, ignorant preacher, didn't know a verb from an adjective, mm -hmm. stood up and preached the most pronounced sermon after Jesus left the earth. He said, this is that in the last day, said God. He quoted the prophet John. He said, in the last day, said God, I will pour out my spirit on what? All flesh. And he preached the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, a man who was completely un- Educated, mm -hmm. who was a flake, but God, Jesus called him a rock Amen. because God seen in Peter who he really was, and the world only defined Peter at what he had been, but Jesus knew what he should be, mm -hmm. and he called him. He called those things that be not what oh, as though they were. He knew exactly what Peter was supposed to be a rock. Come on. Stop believing what others say. Come on, be delivered right there, right now. Mm -hmm. Be delivered of what other people say about you. Teach. Too often we believe the lies we are told. We believe that we are no good and worthless. Mm -hmm. Jesus says, not so. I came to show you that you are more than you think you are. You are the image of God. Say that with me. I am. I, I am, am the image of God. The image, the image of God. Of God. <sighs> God always sees what men and women only look at. In a, man, in a manger, God saw a king, in a servant, a savior, in a sacrifice, salvation, in a crucifixion, a resurrection. In death, God was working at life. In defeat, he was looking at victory. What you or I or your country or my country looks like is not what God sees. God looks beyond the surface to the potential deep within. That is God's way of thinking about everything. Beyond the immediate trouble, God sees success, and he continues to call it forth until what he sees becomes reality. Uh -huh. Remember that the seed of every tree is in the fruit of that tree. Uh -huh. That means the blessings of the third world nations are in the third world nations, and the prosperity of America is in America. Uh -huh. When we become concerned about our individual lives or the corporate life of our countries, we come up with all kinds of schemes and plans to solve the problem. Here's the problem we got now. Make America what? Great again? <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> but, it does, but, it but we're going to explain to you why the error. Come on. As a, as a Christian, there's a, there's a problem with that. Let's get some clarity. Come on. But the answer is not in a multitude of systems and programs. Come on. The answer is right inside of us. Oh, no. Mine, it's all right. Say so the answer is inside of me. The answer is inside of me. Make it personal. Go ahead. It's our attitudes that make the difference. Underline that. Your attitude is going to make the difference and change your village, your, 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 your state, your nation. The attitude of a person. One person is that. Keep teaching. No one can make you rowdy or careless or thoughtless. Uh -huh. You are rowdy and careless and thoughtless because you choose to be. Uh -huh. So stop it. Stop being rowdy. Stop being careless. Stop being thoughtless. Look at your neighbor say, stop it. Stop, stop it. it. Come on. Only you can control how you act. You've got the potential to be considerate and sensitive. Say, that's me. That's me. Say, I'm considerate and sensitive. I'm, I'm considerate and sensitive. sensitive. Not selfish. Not, Not selfish. selfish. Keep reading. God saw in Peter something that Peter had never seen in himself. Peter was so busy agreeing with what others called him that he missed his true potential. When we start believing what others calls us, we are big trouble. Ooh. Then we draw our hands up in despair and refuse to try. People call us lazy, so we become lazy. Uh -oh. People call us careless or stupid or clumsy, so we become careless or stupid or clumsy. Watch it. What others look at is not important. Who we are depends on what we see. Say it again. Who, Who we, we are depends on what we see. <laughs> Come on. Do you believe you can walk into a prison and meet some of the greatest men and women in the world? Can you think that way? They made a mistake. 
They made a misjudgment. Have we made mistakes? Yes. Mm -hmm. Have we? Are we guilty of misjudgment? Yes. Mm -hmm. Come on. They made poor decisions, but that doesn't invalidate their potential. It doesn't destroy who they can be. In that jail, they may be a murderer on death row, but when God looks at that person, he doesn't see a murderer. He sees an author or a leader or a great world changer. Many times God is in disagreement with the people closest to you. He may even be in disagreement with you because the only person God agrees with is himself. Only he knows your true potential. Have you failed? Go to God. He'll call you success and keep calling you success until you feel it. That's what Jesus did for Peter. All right. We're going to stop with that. Is that good? Yeah. Is that good? Yeah. We'll stop yeah. with that. Now, I got a few questions to ask you. All right? Make sure you're on your A game. We're going to review uh, what we've learned so far. Okay? Many people are over. Here's my question to you. Those of you been paying attention? Are we through? You waiting on me. Okay? Give me a minute. Who you are, here's my question, who are you? Okay, so who you are is related to where you come from. Many people are overlooked because of what? You remember the answer? You may give it to you as we go. You should have been marking it. Excuse me. I'll give you the answer. Many people are overlooked because, that's our question, chapter 3. Because what? Others don't see what is in them. It's what we read. It's marked there. Okay? Others don't see what is in them. Okay? A second question is, what did God see in the following people? And we got like a map, uh, a line. We're going to put what we see in these people. What did God see in these people? In Adam, he seen the what? The world. You with me now? In Abraham, he seen what? Nations. Thank you. In Jacob, he found the what? Messiah. In Moses, he found the what? Like In the shepherd boy, he found it. He found it. Third question. Why do you not have to try to be somebody? Because you are somebody. Say, I am somebody. I am somebody. Question four. When God created human beings, he spoke to what? Himself. Glory to God. Y'all working it. He spoke to himself. Question number five. In whose image are you created? God. Excellent. Question six. Write the passage of scripture that supports your answer to question four and five. Y'all remember we, we had, what did we say in Genesis? <coughs> God created what? He made man in his what? Image and likeness. He created a male and female. He created, he created them. So male and both female were considered man, mankind. Say, I'm a man. I'm a man. I'm a mankind. Okay? Okay. Question seven. The key to understanding life is what? The source, the source of life, not in life itself. Thank you. You're doing a great job. In the source of life, not in life itself. Uh, I think we went to question eight. List three words in that means that describe God. Yeah, we did this. Mm -hmm. What are those three words? Tell me somebody. Omnipotent, Omnipotent means what? Say it again. Three words. What other words? Omniscient means he's all-knowing. Say it out loud. Omniscient means what? All-knowing. That means he knows there ain't nothing he don't know. He knows everything. He knows the end from the beginning, the end from the beginning. Keep talking. Omnipresent. He's omnipresent, meaning everywhere at once. Omnipresent. Then what? Omnipotent. What does that mean? All power. He's always loaded with all the power. There's no power greater than God's power. Okay? That was question. Okay, let me give you the last one. No, I, I got two more for you. By whom is your potential limited? God. By God. By God. Only God. Can limit, can limit the potentials in you. Not a man, not, not, a, not a professor, not your mama, not your daddy, not your friends. Say, my potential is only limited by God. My potential is only limited by God. See, people need to know this stuff. Yeah. When you come to a country and become a slave, you have a colonial mindset. You taught you shouldn't read. It's against the law to read in America for your great-great-grandma. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Okay? And they said the only way to, best way to hide something from certain people is what? 
put in the book. And now, even now, some of us have to train ourselves and our children particularly to what read. Because there are things in books that you need to know. Okay? The Bible says, Hosea 4 and 6, I'm talking to you family. The Bible says in Hosea 4 and 6, my people perish for what? A lot of knowledge. God has had people write books and done studies. He wants you to read, whether the book is online or something, but you must read, and and the Bible said, wisdom is the principal thing, but in all you're getting, get what? Understanding. Understanding. You must be literate, not illiterate. Okay? Now let's close with this. Ten. What did God see in Gideon? A warrior. A warrior. Somebody say a warrior. A warrior. What did he see? And Simon the leaf. A rock. He seen a rock. What did he see in a manger? The son of man. A savior. A savior. He seen a savior in a manger. Y'all doing good. Okay. Uh, what did he see in the servant? Savior. The savior. Okay. Say, okay. All right. What did he see in the sacrifice? Salvation. salvation. Somebody say salvation. Salvation. And the cross looked nasty. Mm -hmm. It was a nasty situation. Mm -hmm. The Greeks were looking for a sign, and the Jews were looking for wisdom. Mm -hmm. But God befell them all with the cross. Mm -hmm. Because how can you save me by dying the way you die? Mm -hmm. and you got, you're a bloody mess. Yeah. They didn't beat you. They got tired of beating you. Mm -hmm. Pulled out a whip and knocked all your flesh off your back. Mm -hmm. Put a crown of thorns on you. He'll nail you up. And they nailed his feet across his feet. Mm -hmm. So the only way you could get the next breath was to rise yeah. up with the nails mm -hmm. that pierced his feet mm -hmm. and his hands. He's trying to get air and blood is flowing into his lungs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they don't look nice. Nope. They don't look like no victory there. Mm -hmm. And the cross was a stumbling block to the world. They didn't get the cross. All right. Y'all still there? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the crucifixion, what was the crucifixion? Resurrection. 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 Okay. What was death? What did God see in death? Life. Life. Okay. Let me close out the last thing. What did God see in defeat? Victory. Victory. Okay. Mark your book right there. We'll stop there. We'll pick it up next week. Is that good? Amen. Amen. Okay, what do we, what, we want you, are you listening? We want you to know yourself. You'll not know yourself unless you know God. Can we give that announcement? You want me to do that now? Okay, we want to let you know. Uh, let me see that piece of paper, that, that announcement sheet there, young man. Everything, oh, um, 50s, young man. We are coming to Pleasant Hill, North Carolina. We will be there with uh, Pastor Rosa at Restoration Community Church. We will be there the 28th of June through July 1st. We'll be teaching family. We'll give you an invitation. We'll be there at 10 o'clock and 7 o'clock services. We have two services a day beginning on the 28th of June, and we'll conclude, that's Thursday, Thursday through Saturday, and then we'll have a Sunday morning service, and we'll conclude our teaching series. We will be teaching faith. We'll be teaching on healing. We'll be teaching about the Holy Spirit. Amen. Those will be our subject titles, again, the 28th of June through the 1st of July. We welcome you. We're asking you to come out. <coughs> Bring your Bible, bring your pen and pen, bring your heart that's hungry to know God. Amen. And we're believing for the people to get healed by the power of God, to understand faith by the word of God, and understand that by Jesus' stripes they were healed and received their healing. We expect the miracles. Amen. We're speaking, we expecting Jesus to be who he always is. Amen. Who is he? What was he then? He's today. Mm -hmm. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we believe in the people that never heard about the baptism of the Holy Ghost are going to come and be what? Spirit field. Yes. The Bible says, not by mind, not by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord. 
Amen. Amen. We don't care how many degrees you got. Let we don't me. care if you don't know an A from a B. We're just going to teach the word in a simplistic way that even a little child can understand. Yes. Amen, somebody. Amen. All right, so come and join us. We're going to have a time in Jesus' name. Amen. So with that, is that good? We want to say, take the scriptures that we've given you and begin to understand uh, your potential. Again, we've been teaching from Miles Monroe. Understanding, the title of his book is Understanding Your Potential. <laughs> Defeat and failure has an answer. What's the answer from that? It has to come from God. God said, he sent Jesus that you may what? Have life. Have life. Have life. And have it more abundantly. If you thinking negative about yourself or your surroundings or where you live or your race or your gender, you need to open up the Bible and get to know the truth because he whom the Son set free mm -hmm. is free indeed. I'm sorry your professor can't set you free. Your mama, your daddy can't set you free. The one, the Son of the living God, the Christ, the anointed one, Jesus Nazareth, the only one can set you free, first of all, in the way you think. Because it, the Bible says, is a man thinking? So is he. So is he. So if your thinking is wrong, if you don't think you're somebody, you don't think you're important, you don't think you deserve the best, you will settle for whatever's left. Say, I'm a child of God. Say, so I've been born of God. I'm learning who I am. I'm learning what belongs to me. I'm learning what I can do. I'm learning what God sees in me is the truth. The truth might not be discovered by me. Not yet. Not yet. But I'm learning. But I'm learning. I got my eye on him. He is the author and finisher of my faith. He is the author He is the one. He is the one. That has the ability to reveal to me my design, my purpose, what I can do, what I can do, and how I can do it. How I can do it. I walk by faith. I walk by faith. Not by feeling. Not by I'm not moved by what I see. I'm not moved by what I see. I'm moved by what I believe. I'm moved by what I believe God. I believe the word of God. I believe the word of God. I have been fearfully and wonderfully made. I'm more than a comfort. I'm more than a comfort. Greater is he that's in me. Greater is he that's in me. Than he that's in the world. I have the mind of Christ. I have the mind. I can do all things through Christ. I can do all things through Christ. Who strengthens me. God is my strength. God is he my strength. is my peace. He is my peace. He's the strength of my life. He's the strength and of my life. And in him, I live. I live. I move. I move. And I have my being. And I have my being. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That's who I am. That's who I am. I'm everything the Bible says I am. I am everything the Bible says I am. And I can do everything the Bible says I can do. I can do everything the Bible says I believe it. I believe it. And I receive it. And I receive it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.